Frenchie model here that I printed with a, a sprue in place. The sprue is the part that will plug into this rubber base and we have to find a cylinder that's big enough for our model. So I'm just going to insert this in here like this. Next step is to put the cylinder around it and press it down into the rubber cap here. So the next thing is to tape up these holes with masking tape. I'm just using regular blue painter's tape here to make sure all the holes are covered. When we vacuum the investment medium to get the bubbles out of it, it tends to swell up as the air bubbles expand. And so we're going to put in a little uh, lip of tape around the top. Now we need to figure out how much of the investment medium to mix. I think it might actually might be the two and a half. So we look here, it's two and a half. We'll go with the four inches, 16 uh, ounces of powder. 183 milliliters of water and we're going to use these uh, rubber mixing bowls because after the plaster hardens you can squeeze them to break the plaster out much more easily. 6.45 ounces of water and this, uh, this makes it easy this little hose here by the sink in the, in the wood shop. And this is the part that is going to require a dust mask and I've been wearing a dust mask for the rest of the time. You always add the powder to the water. You mix for three to three and a half minutes. One pound, exactly the right amount. So get the water stirring a little bit. Now we're supposed to stir for three minutes at least. Okay, so we mixed for three minutes. On the investment setting here. Makes a nice seal there. And then turn it on. You'll start to see some bubbles start to rise up. Any little bubble that would cling to the side of your model is going to make a wart of metal because it's a, it's a hollow. This looks to me like boiling, so it's boiling vigorously like that. So now I start timing. 20 seconds of boiling coming up here. So then you switch it off, release the pressure by putting the arrow straight up to the release. It comes loose. We pour it right into our flask half inch or so above the top of our model. Put it back in the vacuum chamber. Turn it back to invest, flip it on, and now we're gonna do it for 90 seconds total. 90 seconds, coming up there. Okay, so then shut it off and immediately release the pressure. Locker 26 is the one I've been using, exactly a little bit before two o'clock, so we can come back here at four o'clock to do the next step. So it's been two hours, so the next step is to take the tape off. Then the next step is to peel this off. Cylinder down with the opening facing down so that the stuff that's inside of it can drip out. Put these little bars up here like this and kind of balance it up there so that the stuff can drip down into the center. The ramp holding program steps right here. So this cycle is not long enough, so we're gonna go up to this cycle, the eight hour cycle. And so we look at this chart and we need to essentially program this ramp. We have our casting temperature for our metal here and the flask temperature that you have to look up online depending on the metal that you have. This is for the bronze that I'm going to be casting. So we're going to want to hold it at uh, 1292 uh, at the end here. And just it's going to hold forever at 1292 until we're ready to actually cast tomorrow. So this is an all night kind of process for eight hours and then holding until we're ready to cast. And we're going to go up through these ramp temperatures here 300, 700, 900, 1350, and then finally come back and settle at 1292. Using these steps here, uh, apply power to the kiln. So then we press 4, which is the user, say user 1, that's what we want, and enter. It's going to walk us through our ramps. And it's going to say ramp 1. There's a little note here that the ideal uh, rate is uh, 9 Fahrenheit per minute, which is 540 Fahrenheit per hour. Okay, so that's already in here. A lot, sometimes the same ramp program will be in here from a previous burnout. Um, and so we just kind of go through and make sure the settings are correct. So ramp one is going to go up at 540 Fahrenheit per uh, hour. Target temperature of the first one is 300, that's correct, so hit enter. For the eight hour cycle, we hold it for one hour. So we hit enter. Now we're into ramp two. Ramp two is also going to go up at 540. Uh, and what's the target temperature? 700, that's still in there. If any of these were uh, needed to be changed, we'd type it in the change. How long to hold? Here in the book it says two hours. And that's still correct, so enter for two hours. Ramp three, still uh, the same 540 uh, Fahrenheit per hour rate. 
Uh, it's going to hold it, get up to 900. In this case, we only have to hold for um, one hour. Now ramp four. Um, we're going to go up at the same rate the whole time, 540, get up to 1350. And in this case, the eight hour burnout is three hours. Again, 540 uh, degrees Fahrenheit per hour coming down. And we're getting to 1292, which is our flask temperature for bronze. And how long do we want to hold it for? 99 hours, basically just meaning forever, until we're ready to cast. So, so we hit enter. OK. And then when we're actually ready, uh, we get onto ramp six, which we're not going to use. Now we press um, zero, zero for this and enter. And now it's back to idle. And now all we do is hit start. And we can see that it's starting to come on. Burnout oven, it's been going all night long. It's holding at uh, 1291. And we have this crucible here, which we're gonna fill with pieces of bronze up to the casting temperature of 1055, because it's in Celsius. This is yellow bronze from Stuller Jewelry Supply Company. I used Mesh Lab um, to measure it with the, one of the filters is a geometric measures and it computes volume. Based on the bronze density of 8.7 grams per cubic centimeter, you can get how many grams of bronze you need for each part. You want to use a little bit of extra just to be safe. So we're going to use 152 grams of bronze. Load this into our crucible and put it into our cold furnace. Close the lid. All of these uh, pieces of equipment pull a certain number of amps. Burnout oven plugged in back here. The va vacuum casting machine plugged in here. Extension cord across the room to plug the melting furnace in over across the room over there. So we're going to turn the casting furnace on. It's actually set to 1055 there, so that's fine. If we need to change it, we hit this reset button, do the different digits and adjust them. But we're going to actually keep it set at 1055 because that's our desired melting temperature for bronze. That's going to take a while to heat up. Vacuum casting setup. So we're going to turn this to chamber. This is not the right size here. So we have an adapter ring. It is the right size. We can take one of these rings, put this in between the adapter ring, and get this nice and centered on there. We'll be able to fit right down here. And then we turn the vacuum on, which pulls the vacuum down, sucking the metal into our mold. So now we're just waiting for this to come up to temperature. It's important for this part when you're looking at molten metal um, to use dark goggles because there's infrared energy coming off that could damage your corneas potentially. Putting on these gloves here, we've got these carbon stirring rods that you can use to poke the metal and stir it. When we look inside, you can see how fully liquidy it is, and the carbon rod will attract any impurities that will kind of stick to it, and they kind of pop off like that. These tongs are for picking up the crucible. These tongs are for picking the um, cylinder out of the oven. Go in to the, front, to the oven. Grab the cylinder, close the oven back up. So ready to pour. Pick this up. Pick this up. And go get right in there. Get sucked in. Close this back up. And pop a carbon block on top. So that's enough vacuuming. Only we'll use the vacuum for a few seconds. To avoid damaging the rubber ring too much. I tend to try and release the pressure as soon as I can. Quickly. So it doesn't damage the ring too much. Now it's possible you could set this on top of a carbon block here and put another carbon block on top. So you can see how much that rubber ring gets damaged by this process. So we're letting these carbon blocks sit here, hopefully reducing oxidation. You know, a minute or two for the metal to cool in the cylinder and seeing what it's looking like. As long as it's still bright red like that, we just need to let it go. Let's take a look. Time. Okay, that kind of dark cherry red color there is fine. Yeah. You can kind of 
of wave it back and forth up the water, kind of break up the plaster. Water cools it off so quickly that it's going to be touched. And there is our cast benching. Looking pretty great.